this. I'm going to go over this article because our people, they love the government because the government is letting them to do whatever the hell they want. Today is a new day. Watch this. Let me share my screen real quick. Okay, I'm just going on a tangent. It's a necessary tangent. I have to go over this. Okay, watch this. Could you read that, what you see on the screen? This is now abortion in South Africa. Read that. Choice on what? Choice on Termination of, Preg of Pregnancy Act, 1996, Wikipedia. So now, Choice on Termination of Pregnancy Act. So this act was, was, was enacted in actually 1997, you understand? But what you are seeing is this act right here is basically license that was given to our sisters to kill. Give me that in uh, Sarah 15 verse 20. You understand? This act that was put up was created, was, was created to give our women license to kill. You understand? That's why today they call it um, legal abortion. There's no such thing as a legal abortion. Abortion is murder. It's that simple. But in the media, they say, no, it's legalized abortion. Mm -mm. So you legalize murder. That's what they are saying. Read that. Sarah 15 verse 20. Ecclesiastes chapter 15 verse 20. Come on. He had commanded no man to do so wickedly. No, 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 no. Read that again, verse 20. Read, read, read it right. Ecclesiastes chapter 15, verse 20. Read. He had commanded no man to do wickedly. Mm -hmm. Neither hath he given any man license to sin. You see what the Lord is saying? The most High God did not give any man license to sin. We are dealing with the women now. It says he didn't give the he didn't give you women license to kill our sons and daughters through abortion. Now, but this act of 1996, which really came to pass in 97, this is license right here for our sisters, the black women, the Latino women, the Native American Indian women to kill our sons and daughters. Now, let's read the paragraph. Read that. The Choice on Termination of Pregnancy Act, 1996, is the law governing no, no. a post act? No, no, in parentheses, act number nine, act number 92 of 1996. Read that. The Choice on Termination of Pregnancy Act, 1996, act number 92 of 1996, is the law governing abortion in South Africa. So this law, is how abortion is conducted in South Africa. Hmm, watch this. Keep going. It allows abortion on demand up to the 12th week of pregnancy. Hold on, abortion on demand. You know what that means, on demand? That means there's going to be a high demand from our sisters to commit abortion. So this law is, is creates abortion on demand. You understand? That's why you ever see when they promote videos and, and you know, DSTV promoting things, they be saying uh, video on demand, VOD, video on demand. This law right here is abortion on demand. Like it's a product. You understand? Read. 12 week, 12, I mean, 12 week of pregnancy, up to 12 weeks of pregnancy. Hmm? 12 weeks. That's what like, that's three months, right? Keep going. Under broadly specified circumstances, from the thirtieth, from the thirtieth to the twentieth week. No, from the thirteenth to the twentieth week. That's six months. Now that's almost six months because it's five months and a couple of a couple of days. So that's up to six months. You understand? So abortion in South Africa, up to six months, you can you can have an abortion. Read. From the thirteenth to the twentieth week and only for serious medical reasons after the 20th week. It's for serious medical reasons. You know what that is, that is called today? Because today when, when sisters are in the hospitals, they want to give birth, if they want to convince them not to do natural birth, you know what they say? No, the baby is not sitting right. No, the baby is too big. Hey, the baby is like this. Because why? They say, but a Caesar will do. You know what they are, they are, they are forcing? Caesars now in the hospitals, even in government, especially government hospitals, because as Caesar, it only limits you to have two babies at the most. If you have three, you are lucky. 
So Caesar is actually population controlled. That's what Caesarian is. You understand? A C-section. When a woman do a C-section, basically that they are making sure that you have a minimum two kids, maximum three, if you are lucky. But the goal is two when you do a Caesar. You understand? So abortion also, it falls under that. Go ahead. The act has been described by the Gutmarker Institute as one of the most liberal abortion laws in the world. Mm. So the abortion that the abortion law in South Africa it says is one of the most liberal, liberal because that goes into democracy. I do what I want, how I feel. It's my body. Okay, what about the body? What about the life that is in your body? The child that you are killing? Do they have a say? No, of course not. Because that's your body, right? It says it's one of the most liberal abortion laws in the world. Now, let's click this. I want to go to this hyperlink right here. Now read that. Abortion in South Africa. Abortion in South Africa. Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. Abortion in South Africa is legal on request in the first trimester of pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And in special circumstances afterwards. Keep going. Abortion was legal only under very limited circumstances until the 1st of February, 1997. When the Choice on Termination of Pregnancy Act, Act 92 of 1996, came into force, mm -hmm. providing abortion on demand for a variety of cases. You see that thing? That's why, so in February, 1997, that's when it came to pass. They forced this thing. Watch this. Now, let's go down, okay? Let's go legal position. I want you to read this part right here. Legal position. What is South Africa's legal standing on abortion? Read that. Legal position. In South Africa, a woman of any age can get an abortion on request. Stop right no there. Reason. Oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. Let's not just read past that. Read that part again. A woman of what? A woman of any age. Hold on. Can, a, wo whoa, whoa, whoa. a woman of any age, any age. But today, when you read the newspapers, right, you see on the news, they are complaining about teenage pregnancy and abortion. But yet, the law, the con according to the constitution of this country, is that a woman of any age can get an abortion on request. So why are they complaining? Why are they pushing the statistics Hey, no, you know, our, our daughters are falling pregnant, you know, at a young age, 10 years old, they are falling pregnant, having abortions at 10 years old. Some of them, they are dying while they are giving birth because their bodies cannot handle a baby. They are still a baby. But the law that the, 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 the law that, by the way, this law was passed by the ANC. Don't get it twisted. This law was passed by the ANC. The same ANC that our mothers, our fathers, Every election, keep on about queuing. They are queuing to vote. Hmm? The same people that are killing your daughters and sons, giving your, your daughters license to kill their babies. You see, our people, we are sick. Okay, read that again in South Africa. In South Africa, a woman of any age can get an abortion on request mm -hmm. with no reasons given. Whoa, whoa, whoa. With, no, hold, with no reasons given. No, I, I, I don't feel right. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I want this baby. Kill the baby. Go ahead. If she is less than 13 weeks pregnant. That's three months. Go ahead. If she is between 13 and 20 weeks pregnant. That she now, can... More than, hold on. 20 weeks, that goes into five to six months. Go ahead. She can get the abortion mm -hmm. if A... Her own physical or mental health is at stake. You see that thing? Her own physical or mental health is at stake. You know what that means? That means, you know what? I'm stressed out. I don't think I'm ready for a baby. That's what this is going into. I'm not ready for a baby. You know, yes, in South I still want to jaw her some more. So guess what? I don't want the baby. But you were ready to lay down with that man that you didn't prove. Now you are pregnant. Now you are stressed out. You know, you know what? I'm not ready. I'm going to kill the baby. That's what this is saying right here. Go ahead. OB, the baby will have severe mental or physical abnormalities. How the hell do they know that? 
How does the white man, these doctors know that the baby is going to have severe mental or physical abnormalities? How do they know? How do they know? Don't tell me about some extra garbage because I've got three. So I know what I'm talking about. The hell is this? Keep going. Oh, see, she is, pre she is pregnant because of incest. She is pregnant because of incest. Even in the scriptures, when that happened, there was never, there, the reason was never, the abortion was never the reason to get rid of the baby. The baby was still taken care of. Keep going. For D, she is pregnant because of rape. Yeah, yeah, that's also never the reason because our fourth, our, 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 our sister Dina, she was raped and defiled by a Hamite. They didn't say have an abortion. So that's out. Read. Or E, she is of the personal opinion. Stop right there. She is, whoa, whoa, whoa. She is of the what? She is of the personal opinion. She is of the personal opinion. This is the reason number five. Meaning uh, her opinion, you know what that translates into? My feelings, how I feel, which is the same as number one. Mental health is at stake. She is of the personal opinion. Where did she get? Because the black woman has no opinion. If you take away TV, you take away social media, you take away DSTV, you take away Facebook, the black woman has no opinion. Where did she get it from? Where is she getting it from? Television and media. That's where she's getting her opinion from. And who's, who's owning the media? The white man, of course. So she does not have an opinion. Her opinion to say, I want to get rid of the baby because is because the white man has put that thought in her head. Just like uh, the white man put the thought in, in, the, in our foremother Eve's head in the garden. The same thing. Keep going. Or E, she is of the personal opinion that her economic or social situation is sufficient reason for the termination of pregnancy. You see that thing? So this is what she feels, that is, she's of the personal opinion that her economic or social situation is sufficient reason for the termination of pregnancy. And that's the reason why you see the abortion rates are so high because of these things that were put in law in the constitution of South Africa. Keep going. If she is more than 20 weeks pregnant, she can get the abortion only if her or the fetus life is in danger. No, 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 no. no. It says she can get an abortion. It says if she's more than 20 weeks, she's more than six months pregnant. It says she can get the abortion only if her or the fetus's life, wait a minute, I thought the fetus was not alive. I thought it was just the fetus is, is, is not alive yet, but they said the fetus is alive. You see the hypocrisy of the system? The system, listen, politics is the, is the, is the doctrine of hypocrisy. It's just like Christianity. It says she only, if her life, her or the fetus's life is in danger. But I thought, no, it's, it's, not, it's not a baby yet. It's just the fetus. Why are they saying the fetus is life here? Because the white man knows that it, listen, the minute you fall pregnant, even if on the first day you are pregnant, that's a life in there right there. Because the egg now, the sperm has met the egg. Fertilization is taking place. Conception is taking place. So there's a life in there. But they convince our sisters to say, no, it's not a baby yet. It's just the fetus. But here they are saying the fetus is life. Why are they saying that? Keep going. Is in danger or they are likely to be serious birth defects? Likely, meaning they are just guessing. Meaning there's, it's not a fact. No, they are guessing. Okay, watch this. Hmm. Read that. A woman under the age... A woman under the age of 18 we will be advised... Okay, read that again. A woman what? A woman under the age of 18 will be advised to consult her parents, but she can decide not to inform or consult them if she so chooses. You see that thing? Listen, this is the government that our mothers, especially our mothers, they are voting for. It says a woman under the age of 18 will be advised to consult her parents. Do you think they're going to advise her to consult their parents? When these young girls, 10-year-olds, 
you understand, to 19-year-olds, go to these abortion slaughterhouses? Do they ask them to consult their parents? No. It says, but she can decide not to inform or consult them if she, if she so chooses. Meaning what? She doesn't have to consult her parents. Guess what? She be uh, under the law that was set up in this country. She is well within her rights to do it. That this is what we're reading. That's what that's the reason why you see their rates of abortion are so high in teenage pregnancy is because of stuff like this. You understand? Go ahead. A woman who is married or in a life party relationship will be advised to consult her partner. Mm. But she cannot, but she can decide not to inform or consult him or her. Now, this is some evil stuff. Here you are, you are married. Ne? Your wife falls pregnant because that's what men and women do when that, those that are married, they have sex. And when you have sex with your wife, children are, you, the wife will fall pregnant. It says your wife has the right not to tell you even. So imagine the three months, in three months, you, you start to see your, your, your wife's stomach is growing because she's pregnant. She can just decide, you know what? I don't think I want to deal with the baby. She can go to the abortion slaughterhouse and kill the baby and come back home with a flat stomach. You as the husband, you have no say. This is the South Africa that our mothers, I'm getting on the mothers because they are the ones that you'll be seeing them wearing these ANC outfits, going by Lloyd Voter. But no, no, Kilo Voter. Kilo Voter la Ramaphosa. But look at what's going on here. Hmm? The most High God never commanded us to vote for no one. It's not in the Bible for us to vote. That's not our culture. We don't do that stuff. The most High God never commanded us to vote. Because when we voted for a king, which was King Saul, guess what happened? Israel was in them some midst of wickedness. Okay? Great. An exception is that if the woman is severely mentally ill or has been unconscious for a long time, mm -hmm. where consent of a life partner, parent, or legal guardian is required. You, you see that thing? So... Hmm, let me see if I want to go somewhere else. Give me one second. Um, uh, let me see, let me see. Yeah, read that part when it says... In general, only medical what? In general, only medical doctors may perform a about abortions. Mm -hmm. In we see that part right there. It says in general. You see how slick they are. Very slick. They are very clever on how they put in these uh, uh, these these laws, these bylaws that they these clauses. It says in general, only medical doctors may perform abortions. That means. It's not specific, it's meaning that there's no strict rules or regulations that are set up to make sure that a doctor is supposed to do that. And by the way, doctor has no business doing that. You understand? Go ahead. Because it's In a general. Matter. Come on. In general, only medical doctors may perform abortions. Right. Nurses who have received special training may also perform abortions up to the 12th week of pregnancy. You see that part right there? Now, that, that part right there, that's why today you see there's so many abortion so-called clinics, because they are not clinics. You understand? Those are slaughterhouses, where they are killing our sons and daughters. So a lot of these nurses, they've retired from their jobs. Now they've opened these abortion slaughterhouses, these slaghpani, they are making money over young girls. That's what they are doing. You understand? Read. A medicine-induced abortion can be performed by any medical doctor at his or her premises, premises up to seven weeks from the first day of the last menstrual period. Mm -hmm. Come on. The usual method is a dose of an anti-progestin followed by a dose of prostag prostaglandin 
analog two days later. So now let's see, let's see. Yeah, that's that medical stuff. Um, okay, so let's see. Let's go back. There's something I want out of this. You see, there's the eagle right there on top. Where colony? You see on top of the eagle? Hmm? You see on top of the eagle, the seven heads, the seven heads of the dragon. The same pointed, the, the same, the same, uh, the same crown that is worn by that Statue of Liberty that is in the US in the Hudson River. That's the same one right here. Okay. And there you see those people that are greeting one another. Those are the Khoisans, mm -hmm. the true owners of this land. Let's keep going. Mm, let me see. Yes, this is the part I want to deal with. Read that before the enactment. Let's read some history because you see, as a people, we don't read nothing. Read that. History. Before the enactment of the Choice on Termination of Pregnancy Act, abortion was governed by the Abortion and Sterilization Act of 1975. You see that thing? It says before this, it says it was abortion was governed by Abortion and Sterilization Act 1975. So that means during the apartheid era, this is what they had. Sterilization and abortion was, they also, they had an act for it. But I want to show you something. Keep going. Which only allowed abortions when the women's mental or physical health was seriously threatened. Mm -hmm. Feelings again, right? There was a likelihood that the child would be born with severe handicap. How the hell do they know that? Keep going. Or the pregnancy was the result of rape or incest. And guess what? The rape or incest, this is 0.5%. These cases that are mentioning here, rape or incest, 0.5%. You understand? Keep going. Or the pregnancy was the result of rape or incest. Mm -hmm. It required the approval of two doctors independent of the one performing the abortion. And in some cases, also of a psychiatrist or a magistrate. So there was a, there was a lot of um, checks and balances that had to be made. You understand? But they still did it anyway. Keep going. Right now, this is the part I want to focus on. Read that. The Choice on Termination of Pregnancy Act was introduced in the first post-apartheid parliament. What is the post-apartheid parliament? It says the choice on term, because we just read the actual act of the choice on termination of pregnancy, abortion in South Africa, where a woman of any age, if they feel they can have it, and guess what? They don't even, if they are married, they don't even have to tell their husbands. You understand? Now, let's click that. Read that. This is the post apartheid okay, era. Let's read it. General elections. Read that. General elections were held in South Africa between 26 and 29 April to 1994. Mm -hmm. The elections were the first in which the citizens of all races were allowed to take part and were therefore also the first held with universal suffrage. So now because of the apartheid uh, situation, right? Now, um, Yeah, that's when the ANC won. Okay, 1994, Mandela was the president. Okay, so that's what this is going into. Go back now. Let's read that again, the paragraph. The Choice on Termination. The Choice on Termination of Pregnancy Act was introduced in the first post-apartheid parliament. That's during the when Mandela took the throne. He took the parliamentary, he was the president. Okay, go ahead. It implemented the statement in the governing African National Congress. Mm, policy the framework. ANC. Whoa, 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 whoa. The ANC, because sometimes we don't understand what this means. African National Congress policy framework. So this choice on termination of pregnancy act was the ANC's policy framework. So the ANC is the one that brought this law into pass. Just think about that. Let that sink in, because you see, we give me that in Luke chapter 9, verse 44, because Christ said something similar. He says, listen, let this sink in into your spirit. 
so you can understand what, what we just read. Okay? Because we don't get it. Read it. Luke chapter 9, verse 44. Listen to what Luke Christ said. Come on. Luke chapter 9, verse 44. Mm -hmm. Let these sayings sink down into your ears. You see what Christ is saying? Let these sayings sink down into your ears. Let it sink into your spirit. You understand? Read that. Go back to the article. It implemented the statement. It implemented the statement in the governing African National Congress policy framework mm -hmm. that every woman must have the right to choose whether or not to have an early termination of pregnancy according to their own beliefs. You see that thing? That's the ANC right there. That's the ANC right there. And when they did this, that's why a lot of black women, they voted for the ANC because of this stuff right here. Because they were giving them license to kill. You understand? And that's why today they are still doing it. And yet, they are complaining that, no, our, our, our daughters, they are having sex. We don't know what to do. No, no, no. You know exactly what you've done. And they know what they are doing. Because here's another question. The condoms. Let me show you how the process works. Okay? Because... They gave our, our kids, they give our kids the condoms, right? So now remember, now they, they not only that, but they are introducing what? They are introducing the injection, like prevention. You understand? The patch, the pills, because some take the take the pills, some take the injection, some take the patch, right? So the patch is the second layer. So if the condom doesn't work, because when you introduce the patch or the injection, what are you saying to the condom? No, you don't really have to use it. Because even if you, you, if you use it, the condom breaks or you choose not to use it, don't worry. We have a second solution. You can just use the patch. You don't have to use the condom anymore. You can just use the patch, which will prevent pregnancy. So now you're having sex without protection, which you're not supposed to be having sex at all if you're not married. Then they say, okay, if the patch or the injection does not work, don't worry, we've got something for you. Abortion is waiting for you. You see how this works? That's how this works. That's how it was set up. You understand? Give me that in Isaiah 32. Hmm. Give me Isaiah chapter 32 real quick. Isaiah chapter 32 and verse 7. Read Isaiah 32 verse 7. Isaiah chapter 32 verse 7. Go ahead. The instruments also of the churl are evil. The instruments, what is the in, instrument? Is a, it says the instruments also of the churl. The churl talk about what? The root. The root. Who's the root? That's talk about the white man. He's talking about him. He says the white man's instruments, they are evil. Condom is evil. The patch is evil. Abortion is evil. Guess who's flocking to do those things? The black woman. You understand? So it says the instruments of the chair are evil. The white man, he's the chair. What is this instrument? The things that we just mentioned. Keep going. He devised wicked devices to mm. destroy the poor with lying words. You see that thing? Even he says this, hold on. It says this white man, he devises, he devises, he devises wicked devices to destroy the poor with lying words. Condoms. That's a lying word. The patch is a lying word. The abortion is a lying word because it gives our people license to sin, commit adultery, commit idolatry, you understand, and commit murder. That's what those things are set up to do. You understand? Keep going. Even when the what? Even when the needy speaketh right. Even when the needy speaketh right. I mean, right now we're speaking right. There's, there's not all parents that are for this. Most parents, they're against this. They speak right, but guess what? It's in the law. You understand? There's nothing you can do. But the, as long, if the law of the land contradicts the Bible, we don't follow the, that law of the land. We follow the Bible. Because the law of the land says men and men can have sex. They can get married. And that's not even a marriage. No, but the Bible says that's an abomination. So, no, no, we don't support that. You understand? Give me the book of Jeremiah 7. Give me Jeremiah 7 real quick. 
Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 8. Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 8. Go ahead. Behold, ye trust in lying words that can that cannot profit. You see, our people, the we we our people, our people, they trust in lying words. You understand? The, the, the politicians, they speak lying words. The pastors, they speak lying words. You understand? Okay. These condoms, these are just lying words. These are lying instruments. You understand? The patch, abortion, because they give you the reasons why you must have it. No, but you are poor. You understand? No, but, you know, you are, you are in distress. No, but, you know, the way you feel is not according to your beliefs to have a baby right now. Listen, those are lying words. And our people, they trust in that. That cannot profit. What is these abortions have profited our people? Nothing. What has politics profited our people? Nothing. What is this Christianity has profited our people? Nothing. Read verse nine. Verse nine. Mm -hmm. Steal, murder. Will, will ye steal? Will ye steal our people? They steal. Look at during the time when they were looting, they were destroying the, the shops, they were destroying property, setting things on fire. Now they have no jobs. Now they don't know where to go and buy their food because they destroy the stuff. They steal. Go ahead. Will you steal? Murder. Murder. Abortion. We just going over it. Will you steal? Will you murder? Commit abortion. Go ahead. And commit adultery. And commit adultery because that's the root cause of these abortions. Right. And swear falsely. And swear falsely, meaning you lie. You say, I love the Lord, but you don't love the Lord. Okay, come on. And burn incense unto Baal. Because these idols that you're worshipping, that you are sacrificing your sons and daughters to, shedding innocent blood. Read. Really? And walk after other gods whom ye know not. Because our people walking after other gods whom they don't know. Read. Really? And come and stand before me in this house. Then you come to the church. You go to the church. You see as if you are standing before the Lord. Read. Really? Which is called by my name. Mm -hmm. And say. We are delivered to do all these abominations. You see that thing? He says we are delivered to do all these abominations. Because our people are doing abominations that we read in verse 8 and 9. Read on. Verse 11. Is this house which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes? Mm -hmm. Behold, even I have seen it, have seen it, saith the Lord. You see, the Lord says, I'm looking, I'm, I see all of these things going on. You understand? Now, go back to the article. Okay, I'm almost done with this. Um, yeah, read, read that part again. It says, it implemented... It implemented the statement in the governing Af African National Congress policy framework that every woman must have the right to choose whether or not to have an early termination of pregnancy according to their own beliefs. It's not even an early te termination because now they say more, more than six months you can do it. Now there's full term abortions now. When you are nine months pregnant, the law says you can even have an abortion at that point. You can't make this stuff up. Keep going. Although it was requested that parliament members be allowed to vote according to their personal beliefs, mm -hmm. the ruling party... The what? The ruling party... That's the ANC. It says, although it was requested that, the, that parliament members be allowed to vote according to their personal beliefs, meaning what? the members of parliament were allowed to say, you know what, me, I don't believe with this. I'm not, I'm not for that. I'm not going to vote for this thing. It says, but the ruling party, the ruling party that, it says what? It says the ruling party ruled that its own members may not vote against the act. So ANC said, no, no, you mustn't vote against it. They forced them. You see that thing right there? And guess what? This is, by the way, let's not forget, this is, they say, post-apartheid parliament. Who was the president during that time? Nelson Mandela was the president. The same one that he has, he has an idol that is set up there in Santin that people be taking pictures with. That's the same one that did, did, disallowed those 
because there were our mothers in there, our fathers in there that believed that they didn't believe in abortion. But the ruling party said, you can't vote against this act. You must, you must, you must make sure that it comes to pass. They did that. You see, our people are clueless. You are busy watching Isbaya. You have no idea what's going on. You understand? Go ahead. And the, and the act passed by 209 votes to 87. Mm. Five abstained, 99 were absent. Mm, how convenient. It, it, came t- it came into force on 1st February, 1997. So this is three years after Mandela was in office. He made sure that this went down. Nobody talks about this stuff. You understand? Nobody's talking about these things. But this is the same man that the people were saying, no freedom. No, 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 no. There was no freedom that was going on in 1994. No freedom. It was the illusion of it. But there was no freedom that went down. Okay? 